Hi guys and welcome to another video. In this video I want to show you another game and again I want to discuss the topic initiative versus material. And the game was played some years ago in an open tournament. My opponent was rated about 1900 FIDE and I had the black pieces and the game started out with some yeah, um, not normal opening, but I just uh, stick to the rules and uh, occupy the center, developed the knights, developed the bishop, went for castling and my opponent uh, tried to fianchetto his second bishop. So basically the first stage of the opening is over and now we face the start of the middle game, need to come up with some plans. Um, some ideas how to uh, continue and there are many here for example one typical plan in such structure is to develop the bishop and then exchange it on h3 trying to weaken the white king a little bit i guess what i disliked about this plan is that let's say after bishop to g4 my opponent could play bishop to b2 and my pawn on e5 is a bit vulnerable so i'm just not in time to play queen d7 because it would drop a pawn and also i might not be in time to defend like this because he always has b5 and my defenders will be pushed back so that's not really working and maybe already here he could also play um, b5 so maybe that's an issue too so um, realizing this threat I was thinking about doing something concrete which is going e4 in the center and since we are very well developed I think this is quite a decent move to go so we threaten the knight the knight needs to move again and we're ready to recapture with the knight which um, would be a very nice piece there in the center and also we solve the issue of not losing a pawn so that's quite nice and white has several options um, I think one option could be just to drop back the knight, um, another option could be drop it back to here. But instead my opponent decided to take and I recaptured, he played bishop b2. Now there follow some um, yeah, quite natural moves, I tried to trade the bishops because this trade would actually benefit black because there are some dark square weaknesses in white's position and for example if he develops I would already be in time to sit down on the dark squares and this knight is very strong, it's very annoying for white, he needs to move the queen out of the way and there is already concrete pressure against e2 which could pile up after rook e8 very quickly. So um, he decided not to trade which is quite reasonable I think and uh, quite a good decision. Also queen c1 is an interesting try allowing the trade but not giving up the dark squares because my knight does not get to c3 so this would be quite decent um, but he chose to play knight d4 instead so let's see what happened here i tried to find some weaknesses in his position and um, to think about the important decision should we take shouldn't we take what should we do here if you want you can take some your time and think about the position on your own try to come up with a move and then we'll continue so if your choice was to take here i'm not so happy with this one because after this trade white develops i would say quite smoothly and also if we trade again his queen is very well, well placed and he's ready to finish the development and also if we just trade once and then develop, I think white might be in time to consolidate. Um, he's not yet ready to develop the knight, nor does he want to take himself, but maybe he can do some preparation like e3, maybe yeah, just playing slowly. Still here he has some issues to solve, so if you chose to take only once, this is quite reasonable too, but um, the move knight e5 is yeah, my favorite. We are, want to sit down on this weak square here and it's not so easy for white to prevent. He doesn't like to get this bishop here exchanged because otherwise my bishop would be very strong without an opponent bishop. 
So he wants to do something against knight c4 and it's not so easy as, for example, knight d2 runs into takes, takes and knight c4 anyway and I'm able to trade the bishop on b2 and then he's um, pinned in a very nasty way, which is definitely better for black. Um, how much is the question, but yeah, this is something black would enjoy. So therefore he chose to play bishop e4, which I think is quite a huge positional mistake. Um, because this bishop is very crucial in uh, for white's king safety. So in general, when you have this fire and cattle bishop, as it is called, um, you don't want to give it up for anything except this other bishop, because if you give it up, this bishop will appear here very soon and this will give so much headache to your king and um, the king will be vulnerable for a long time and sometimes even checkmated. So don't give this bishop up, don't give up this bishop um, if you don't need to, it really saves your king. And if I was white here, I would really try to come up with something which doesn't give up the bishop and does not compromise so much. Um, this is not easy here, but um, maybe I would even prefer this one. I think we are not losing anything yet. Um, still, we need to make sure that we are not losing anything because if there is something like b6 followed by c5 and we're losing material, then we rather uh, prefer the other line. Um, so this is something you need to evaluate and yeah, maybe there is something else, um, maybe even some yeah, passive looking move um, is better here, but it already looks like trouble. So maybe just here it's the moment for white to do something else, queen c1, and there, those issues don't start so easily because it's not easy for me now to transfer knight to c4 and white is already able to maybe finish the development sooner or later, maybe go c3 knight d2 and kind of uh, hold things together but we will just see what happened in the game after knight e5 bishop e4 pawn to e4 he tried to finish his development and of course i played bishop to h3 forcing the rook away and now it's an important moment again and you should think on your own how would you proceed in this position? Can you create some attack, some initiative against the white king and how would you do it? Take your time and then we will discuss the solution. So hopefully many of you had the idea of playing e3, which is very aggressive. We want to rip open the white king side and we do this again by sacrificing a little material and I would be confident to go for this, even if I don't regain this pawn. What's the reason for this? In general, white is a pawn up, but this pawn on the e-file is of very low quality. So can you ever imagine that you're losing because of this double pawn? I cannot really imagine this because this pawn cannot proceed. It's um, maybe even worse than um, having just one pawn because especially the pawn in front, it's very hard to defend it. So. That's the first thing you need to get used to. Sometimes the material um, loss is compensated by something like pawn structure. So you don't need to worry at all because there is no risk that you're losing due to this pawn structure here. So that's the first thing. And also there are a lot of uh, attacking possibilities now. Maybe you spotted bishop to g5, which wants to start an attack with bishop e3 king needs to go into the corner and then maybe something like knight g4, queen d5 or some of these things combined. So let's see what happened in the game. I think we should have a look at the materialistic approach of trying to hold on to the pawn. So if white defends the pawn, what would you do? And I think a very reasonable way to play is 
for example, at a minimum we could take and regain the pawn, but maybe we are not really interested in trading this excellent bishop against this passive knight, right? So maybe we should consider activating our pieces. So knight g4 and knight c4 both come to mind. And especially knight c4 is kind of a double attack. So the bishop needs to do something and also knight e3 is a threat. So I suppose um, bishop c1 is a move he needs to play. But also after this, I think um, there are some ideas. Um, for example, in this situation, we might already consider bishop f1 as after, for example, rook e1, bishop e3, we either win a piece or if he takes, we win the exchange. And of course, he could also take with the king. But this is also quite uncomfortable, I think. For example, bishop e3 again threatens the knight and also there are still some checks so he cannot take it and if something like this I would keep the queens on and uh, try to um, continue the initiative here. So queen f6 and this must be very very good, there are several threats, for example rook d8 coming, trying to trap the queen, also this rook on d1 is hanging so I'm pretty sure black is in very good shape there. So maybe it's still the toughest defense and he should go for this. Instead, white collapsed quite quickly here. He played knight 2 to f3 and after bishop e3, king h1, knight to g4, threatening knight f2, trying to win the queen. He played rook to f1 and of course it's already uh, winning um, for black as we could already take the material but as one main point of this uh, video I want to make you aware not always be too materialistic and just um, sometimes look for more, more positional stuff so actually I think this rook here is very bad and we could take it in any moment the rook cannot move because otherwise the knight would come there again so if I take the rook he got rid of his very bad rook yeah and my bishop it's quite a good attacking piece as well as my knight so in this position i decided just to um, bring more pieces into the attack uh, pinning some more stuff um, there's really not a lot he can do for example yeah it's hard to suggest any move here right so for example, if he moves the queen, I I might just win two exchanges, right? So, for example, here, at a minimum, I can take this and win another exchange because the queen is attacked, which would not have been the case before. So, um, white really has nothing uh, he can do. And in the game, he decided to play rook b1 which I don't really get, but this is something which happens um, when your opponent has a really passive position here, coming up with passive moves. Okay, now I get the idea again. So he's uh, protecting his bishop and trying to threaten some discovered attacks, but when we have a closer look, I think there are not so many discovered attacks which really threaten us. For example, on f5 we take, c6 and e6, we also could just take the knight and maybe b5 is something, but we could also just move the queen away and there is no issue. So I decided to bring just one more piece into the attack and my opponent resigned. Because it's uh, yeah, very passive, very hopeless and black could cash in the material at any moment he likes. So um, I hope um, you found this one instructive. Summing up, there are two very interesting moments I guess. First, um, never give up this uh, bishop so easily. I think that's a big positional mistake. Second moment is um, such move like e3 should come very natural to you because we're not risking much because the extra pawn is yeah, just a damaged pawn and it will be very hard for him to convert if he ever survives uh, the attack. So don't be afraid, it creates a lot of weaknesses, it weakens the king by a lot 
and this really opens the attacking chances for us. And the third thing is never um, be too intimidated by the absolute value of material. So sometimes a rook is just worse than a bishop and you gain more if you don't take it immediately, especially in cases where you can take material later. You might keep the tension, keep the pressure because it's more inconvenient and also harder to handle and you can pile up even more pressure. So if you like the video, please like and subscribe. It helps me a lot and happy to see you next time. Goodbye.